sound check the test one two two check all right hey tiger friends it's meredith with uh tiger lovely resources and we're back for this week's episode of tiger news tell it all uh yeah i'm not even gonna tell you what day it is because i'm not even sure what and when i'm gonna get this out so um i have a lot to recap and i'm gonna really try my best to not make this crazy long but there's so much good stuff all right so i filmed this last week on tuesday during the daytime and tuesday evening um we had a planning meeting for our upcoming uh event in july a fundraising event bible trivia on july 19th um in o'fallon missouri and that is from 7 to 10 o'clock. It is a Bible battle for his babies. Church is uniting for the children. Tickets are $20 a piece or $150 or $155 a table. Seats eight. Um, but join us for some fun and trivia and fellowship and fundraising. We have some really very important things that we're trying to get the funds together for. Of which I will remind you again. One, opening the house of Rahab, the emergency placement safe home. Two, uh, getting the Tiger Lily Resources National Headquarters and Training 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 Center up and running. Uh, we're in the very beginning processes of that. So those are two very big projects that we're working on that we are doing our very best to raise funds for, whether that's through events, through general donations, or through grant requests that we have out. Please keep prayers up still. I have not heard back yet from Walmart. Spark Good grant request that I put out. That was our first one. We have a grant request out out right now with Sisters of the Most Precious Blood. Uh, that was for the first, Walmart was 5,000. The second one was for 15,000, I think. Um, and Current Word Foundation is another one that we'll be submitting. I think that one's going to be about 15 or $20,000 request. So those are some decent amounts. The trivia, um, we have a goal of $10,000. So if you want to join in on that to help get the house open and get the National Training Centers and Tiger Lily headquarters open, um, those are two, those are ways that you can get involved. Or, way that you can get involved with the trivia night or just donate which i'll give you that at the end if you'd like to volunteer to help get that event going you can uh, let me know here and we'll add you to the planning team people are helping to get um, silent auction items and raffle items and uh, spread the word get sponsors sell tickets all of that fun stuff that takes many many hands to make an event like this happen um, last time we did an event like this we had about 25 volunteers i think we have a uh, six right now six or eight um which we're off to a very good start already things are coming in but if you'd like to join the team we'd love to have you okay so that was tuesday of last week that was uh april 16th so april 17th i had a, a presentation at amarin in house springs and that was my fifth presentation i believe with amarin i love doing those those are usually about 30 to 40 uh, men that are in attendance at these. So I've had a great turnout with them and honestly, great success of connection, of awareness, of eye opening, of questions, questions, questions. And this one was no different. Packed house, very engaged, lots of great connect, uh, questions. And um, I know they were forever changed. They, their eyes are now open. When I was leaving, um, there were like five ladies, I think, in that presentation. And when I was leaving, one of the ladies was in her cubicle and I was making my rounds saying goodbye to everybody. And she got up and gave me a big hug. And she was like, you know, I really have to say that I've lived a really sheltered life. I've had a good life. I have a great marriage. My daughters are older now. They went to uh, private school, great education. We go to church. Like we just lived a very happy, sheltered life. And I really, I have to admit, I didn't pay attention to the heavy, dark things because my life was just like it was, right? And she said that in a place of honesty. And so I responded from a place of love, right? And I said, I understand that. But I also want you to know that as a Christian, by living that life, you actually were part of the problem. And I mean that in the utmost love, right, of, of an awakening. We here as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, are the hands and feet of him. And we are here to do his work until we are joined with him again. So faith without works is dead. We cannot keep going to church on Sundays saying how much we love him and then going home and doing absolutely nothing of the work that he would do. We are 
are commanded, yes, to one, go out and share the good news, tell the gospel far and wide, but we're also meant to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that is mean, that means serving those in the dark, dirty places that nobody else is going to and show them the love and light of Jesus Christ. That's our duty and our privilege as Christians to be able to do that. So I challenged her to, now that she is older and her children are older, um, think of ways that she can actively get involved in being the hands and feet of Jesus, whether that's with us or with another organization anywhere else in the community. Really impactful day. Um, I was actually glad I was able to share that word with her and she appreciated it. She was not offended by it at all. Thursday, Thursday, I was absolutely spent. My bandwidth was like, nothing. And we went to church and I was just desperately ready to sit at the feet of my father and just love him and let him love me and refill me and tell me anything he needed to tell me. And I was really burdened with, um, his heart for what we just came back from. We had a four day uh, trip up to Bloomington, Illinois, again, to Illinois State University. That door is still wide open. Um, but I was going up there uh, to speak to sororities. And then I had one other meeting with um, faculty and academics. So the three was like a hundred plus uh, sorority girls. And so I was asking the Lord, like, you know, what do you have for them? What message do you have for them? And he gave me a beautiful, beautiful message that I actually turned into a video for them. And it just melted their hearts, encouraged them, uplifted them. But he really pressed the burden of his heart for them. They are the next generation of world changers. They're actually going to school, a lot of them to be teachers, some of them to be nurses, some of them are going into the business world, but majority are teachers. And so they're literally touching the next generations. And uh, the feedback, the feedback that we got was amazing. Well, I'll get to that. I'm ahead of myself. So Thursday was literally just a night of refilling and then feeling like I got hit by a truck because I really felt his burden, um, for the message that was going to be given. Okay. So Friday was just a whole crazy day of me. Well, making that video, it took me like eight hours to put that together with a lot of little mini pic pictures and snippets. And it was a lot and I was really tired. So it was probably took three times as long as it normally would, but I got that done and I got myself ready. Um, and then Saturday, that was the 20th. Um, we spent the afternoon in Shipman, Illinois. It's a little town that's in between Jerseyville and like the highway to go 55 North to Bloomington. So it's like in the middle of nowhere, right? But it's the sweetest little town, very strong community, very friendly, sweet community. And it was a vendor fair. Um, Wrapped in Hearts is the uh, host company that put that together and invited us to come along. And they let us um, have some time to speak to some of the people that were there and, and raise awareness there of human trafficking. That was a little impromptu. Um, we had a small crowd and there was like 10 people. But in that, there was a few people who actually had a direct touch with exploitation and trafficking in a very small town in the middle of nowhere. There were people that was touched by it there actually. So that was a sweet day. We made some beautiful connections with some people. Um, even one connection for me is, is a gem and we had a few connections and that was really wonderful. So Megan, our community uh, connections coordinator, whom I've heard you've heard me talk about before, she came with us on Saturday and then she came with me on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So I want to take just a quick moment to pause. We tried to film this three times up in Bloomington from our Airbnb and every time the phone kicked off and erased like the entire message, like 20 something minutes that we made, gone. So. Uh, we kind of realized why there was more things of discovery that we had to add in this episode. So we waited, but in the meantime, I'm going to get back to the story, but first I want you to meet Megan. So ladies and gentlemen, my tiger friends, meet Megan. Hello, tiger friends. This is Megan, your community coordinator with Tiger Lily Resources. I'm coming to you to share an eventful, exciting weekend. We have covered six presentations, been to... I believe four different police stations, a fire station, and just the feedback is wonderful. We've also been to another place that serves sex trafficking victims. We also seen a trafficker at a makeshift spa. My heart breaks for them. 
In the state of Illinois, it ranks 36th. In the state of Missouri, we rank 4th. In St. Louis alone, on Sunday, 400 girls that were put on the internet. Ask yourself, how many times a day do you see it, but yet you ignore it? Or do you just not know the signs for it? And if you don't know the signs for it, please allow us to come into your place of business, school, your church, your homes, anywhere. But please allow us to inform you on the severity of human trafficking. Why is it so dear to my heart? Because I was trafficked. You don't even know you're being trafficked. That is how smooth, that is how slick they are. But I come to tell you that God will rescue you. He will never stop marching. He will reach down into the darkness and pull you out. My heart breaks. So as we're sitting in those presentations, the looks on their face, nobody knew. That was the main response that nobody knew. And they're even asking, why is college security not doing anything? Why is the cops not doing anything? Why isn't it in the healthcare system? Yeah, that's a good question. Why isn't it? It is a $150 billion industry daily. These babies who belong to someone daily, they are being sold. And what are we doing? We're marching. We're marching to the beat of Jesus Christ. And we are going into that dark place to pull them out. But we need an army behind us. We need people who will be our eyes and our ears to pull them in as our home is being waited upon to open. Why is our house not open? Our house isn't open because we don't have funds and we refuse to be state funded. Think about where you live at. I don't care if it's in a nice neighborhood. I don't care if it's in a hood. Think about how many times you walk through Walmart. How many times you go to the grocery store. How many times you're out and about in a day and you see it slide right underneath your, your nose. Or do you see it? Once you see, you can't unsee. We have people asking us to come to their churches, their schools, in Chicago even. We'll go anywhere. But somebody has to stand for those babies. Will it be you? Or will you just continue to turn of that ear like it doesn't exist? We did get to visit a place that also serves sex trafficking victims. Literally, the next door by it was a makeshift traffic stop. And you know what we saw while we were there? We saw Big Bad Joe. What do you think they're doing to our poor babies in there? They're sick and tormenting them, beating them, raping them. Well, you know what? I'm tired of people sugarcoating this. It's ridiculous. And I'm not going to keep standing back and just watching it not be dealt with. So once again, I ask you, I don't care what you got to do. Get the word out. Please let us come and inform you if you need it. If you can't do anything else, pray for us. And you don't want to pray for us if you're not Christian. Cool. We need funds. We need funds to open up the house for the women and the babies. We can't even afford to wait another week. It needs to be now. I love you guys. This is Megan, the community coordinator. Signing out. Okay, so that that's Megan. She's fire. She is on fire. I, I promise you, I really believe that the Lord gave me a teeny mini me in many aspects. She is a go-getter. She is my age when I started the ministry. Um, so it's literally like seeing the younger me rise up for action, for duty, for business. Like she is on it. And I'm so very thankful, Megan, that you are now a part of this team. We are going to get so much accomplished together. So thank you for being on board and you are a treasure. Thank you. Okay. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we were up in Bloomington, uh, had a presentation for like a hundred plus girls. We spoke to like I don't know, four plus sororities. Um, the first night we had over a hundred and very impactful. We always, I always survey the, the faces of people as I'm giving presentations and you can always tell who has had an encounter in some way, shape or form of a personal 
touch of exploitation or trafficking. You can see it on their faces. You can see it in their body language. So I shared what I discovered in body language with the president of the sorority so they could follow up and just offer an extension should they need any help, talk, anything. Um, so that was a very powerful night. We were up super late uh, just doing paperwork and follow up. That was great. Um, Monday, we had a presentation with the academics. It was a small group, maybe six of them. Super receptive. I know that is an open door even more for more faculty. And then also one of the uh, teachers that was there, she asked if we could, if we'd be interested in coming to her church to do a presentation up there. Absolutely. Yes. Any place that wants to give us an open door to come and talk, we will be there. Keep that in mind. If there's any place that needs to know this, which is every place, everyone needs to know this information, reach out and we will come and give a presentation. So that was Monday during the day. Um, from there, we went by campus police, talked with them, because I've had in other classes, some of the students have voiced their concerns of lack of attentiveness and un a knowledge of the campus police is in regards to caring and overseeing, protecting them. So we went and spoke with them. Um, it was kind of an interesting interaction and one that I'm not done with yet. We will make friends with them, but it did not seem to start off to a very friendly start, but that is okay, I don't mind. Uh, from there, we went to the normal police department. No, yes, the normal police department. Um, and then we had, and the normal, Campus police, normal police, normal fire department. Okay, so walked into the normal police department and they asked if we did, you know, how were our trainings? Were they, I said, well, they can either be as short or as long as you would like them to be. We could do a half hour, we could do hours. And so they want to do an eight hour continuing education course that they would actually get counted hours for and certification for. Yes, Lord, that's going to be us. So he's gonna, the Lieutenant is going to help arrange us to get certified to be able to in, uh, deliver that training course statewide. That is amazing. So we are already right now working on a collaborative training with Campus Police, Normal Police, Normal Fire Department, Bloomington Police, and Bloomington Fire Department all together. What? That's gonna be powerful. I'm excited. Okay, so that was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we had another presentation Tuesday night. Also good. All of them, so I, I will mention uh, all of the sororities because I sure, surely, sorry girls, but I can't remember you all off the top of my head. So I have to um, do better homework and I will put you all listed on here. Zeta, Zeta Tau, Tau Alpha, Alpha sorority. sorority. Epsilon Sigma, Sigma Alpha, Alpha sorority. sorority. Delta, Delta Sigma, Sigma Theta, Theta sorority. sorority. Zeta, Zeta Phi Beta, Beta sorority. sorority. Sigma, Sigma Gamma, Gamma Rho, Rho sorority. sorority. Iota, Iota Phi Theta. Theta. Fraternity. fraternity. Wednesday, before we were leaving, we stopped and, uh, was that Wednesday? No, no, no. I take that back. That was Tuesday. Wow. So much happened. Tuesday, we had a meeting with another organization called Catalyst. They are a residential long-term, uh, Christ-centered home for survivors. And they are also in a bit of a transition. Um, their house isn't open yet, but again, it has been open before, but it'll be opening again soon. Um, they had a transition of home. So that home is currently still there, just not open. And they have another home that's in Texas. The founder and her husband had to move from Illinois down to Texas for his work. And so they started another home down in Texas while still keeping the one in Bloomington going. So yee, we have two connections now. And what a beautiful, beautiful meeting that we had with Alicia. We prayed hard together, like Holy Spirit was there. We stormed the gates of hell, which actually happened to be right next door. Right next door from their office is one of those spas. And it is an erotic spa. And it had all the telltale signs, the blacked out windows, the closed blinds, the cameras pointing in on each side of the windows there was an open sign and in the corner of the window where the open sign was was a little lit up kitty cat connect those dots and then on the front door it said something about police protection fund that means they pay into the police department hmm, interesting I have not brought that back up yet to the police department there. I will though, because I will do that on our next trip in person. Um, I did not talk to the appropriate person when we were discussing training to bring that up, but that was right there. So I actually used that. We took a couple pictures um, while we were sitting there. 
there was a gentleman, I don't know, there was a guy who went in there with a little backpack, tiny little backpack. It was pretty empty because it was squishy and it looked very light. So I can only imagine what he had in that bag to bring in for that appointment. And he looked in the door where we were meeting, looked at all three of us looking straight at him. The door wasn't locked to the spa when we left. It was cracked open and little Miss Firecracker, as would have I 10 years ago, uh, she was ready to walk up in that space. She went to open the door and I'm like, nope, not yet. <laughs> um, but we still, we did leave some information for him on his car and we made our presence known. So live and well, there was trafficking, literally exploitation and trafficking right next door. And so eyes are on that, prayers are over that, that it will be annihilated in Jesus name. Um, okay, so Wednesday we were getting ready to leave. That was a quick stop. We stopped by the police department, Bloomington PD, Bloomington FD, and um, have contacts there to get the training arranged. So, and then we drove home and yes, so that was, that was the week. Um, what a jam packed week it was absolutely life changing on so many levels. It was precious and such an honor to share time with all of those amazing girls. And there was a couple guys who popped in from the fraternities. And then when we were on campus, we spoke with several fraternity guys that were out in the courtyard that were raising funds for either their fraternity or another organization. And it was just a great trip. So I'm going to put requests out again. Guys, we need your help to get these projects rolling. Please consider being a monthly donor. $30 a month, a dollar a day is going to go astronomically far. We are such good stewards of your money. We put all of our funds into growing this. Um, into facilitating our programs with excellence. We give wonderful presentations. The feedback that we have gotten has been nothing short of awesome. Like I'm mind blown by the feedback that we're getting from people because they just like it. They love it. They're engaged. They have questions. They are forever changed. So again, please consider pouring into this mission and ministry as on a monthly basis. Um, if you can just give one time, we gladly welcome that. You can give to our website, Tiger Lily Research resources.org on the donate button, click the dollar amount, click the envelope that you want to give to. If you are giving monthly, don't forget to set recurring or it won't come monthly. It'll just come one time. You can also do one-time gifts on there. You can do one-time gifts on PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. Our handle is at or dollar sign Tiger Lily Resources, or you can send a check to PO Box 235, Godfrey, Illinois, 62035. And yes, and thank you. Yes, and amen. Be blessed to be a blessing, to get a blessing. We need you on our team. If you would like to actually join the Tiger team, um, you can drop a comment here and we will send you the links to get connected um, digitally. So that way you'll be properly included into the groups when uh, different things come up for volunteering and hands-on. So sororities, lovely ladies, you have forever changed my life. Thank you so much. I am so honored and blessed that I was able to have just a moment of time with you. I hope you take this information far and wide for the rest of your lives. Thank you so, so, so much. And Tiger friends, if I'm forgetting anything, I'll catch up next week, but I think that's everything. So for now, this is Meredith with Tiger Lily Resources, and I am signing off. Sound check the test one two check one two check the test one two check.